Hello folks and welcome. So today's video I have is on um, Linux Mint Cinnamon. I'm going to be talking about uh, some extra features on your Mint menu that I haven't covered in previous videos or I should say I'm going to rehash some of the stuff but I'm going to give you some extra tips along the way. So um, I'm filming in 4K today so you can adjust your player appropriately um, but more importantly I am just going to make mention that my videos are more than two minutes and I, but they do have timelines or chapters. Also, I encourage that you read my about section on my YouTube site and also the community tab if you're wanting to do some keyword searches on my 110 plus videos. Now I'm gonna move on. Now that you can see this is, uh, I'll call it system information, not bore you with terminal information. So let's talk about this Mint menu. So you can put in text, you can change that Mint menu logo to whatever you want, pretty much, and uh, also change the size of these icons. You can remove the icons, you can make this box taller. Uh, you can do a lot of things just by doing a couple of clicks. All right, let's talk about a couple of them. So let's hit configure. First of all, let me turn that off. So this is normally what you're probably seeing, your little, um, logo and your mint logo and no text maybe however sometimes you have that turned on with the, the maybe the the word in here it says um probably menu or something like that anyways i all i did was throw the the letters linux mint 21 cinnamon in here just for reminding you this is a cinnamon desktop did you know you can change that icon well if you've seen some of my other videos you may be aware of that so if I wanted a green one, for instance, I can just do that rather easily. I could also bring in my own icons and uh, pick silly stuff from the system even. And uh, make that my new Mint logo, as they say. And again, you can browse your own folders. All right. Not going to dwell too much on that. You can also change the size of the icon itself relative to the height of your panel bar. Your panel bar is adjusted differently. And hopefully you've seen my videos on that to make this taller. But you can also adjust that icon. So if I were to uh, reduce that, you can see that the icon went a little smaller. And now I'm going to make it bigger. Just keep growing it. Now I'm almost to the top of the uh, panel bar. So 42 is a little too big. So I'm going to reduce that down to where it looks a little bit nicer. 40 is, uh, okay, 36 to 40 is probably a good. All right, again, you can turn that off and now it makes it small again or back on keyboard shortcut to open and close menu mint menu what is super l super r all right some of you folks have keyboards with what they call a start key sometimes it has the symbol of a window on it like a windows key but anyways that key is normally found in between control and the alt key some folks have two of these hence the left and right. Mine only has the left, so I'm going to depress mine. And that opens the Mint menu. That's all that means. Okay, you can change that and pick a new key. Did you know that? All right, I'm gonna hit Escape. But you can change that yourself by clicking on that. That is clickable. You can see the yellow box. New accelerator just means pick a new key. Be very careful of the keys you pick. Open the menu when I move my mouse over it. Let me activate that. That's normally off by default, and it, you can have a delay in here if you want. But I'm going to turn this off, or sorry, close the box, and then take my mouse. I'm not going to do any clicking. I'm just going to move my mouse toward the Mint logo, and it auto-opens. I'm not doing anything other than moving. Now I clicked. You can hear it, but I'm, all I'm doing is opening that, and now I can start doing searches. Some people may like this feature and some folks don't. So that is normally turned off by default. All right, so I'll force the panel to be visible when opening the menu. You probably want that. Uh, the use menu animations, I normally have mine turned off, but it does allow the uh, to animate when you're opening and closing. Right, I don't really use that feature, but it's here for your selection. Under the menu, here's a couple of things that I've rehashed in the past, but I'm going to cover this briefly again. Anytime you touch this 
or possibly even this area here, may I recommend that you do a screenshot. Just type in SC and look for that tool and do at least a window screenshot and take the screenshot and save it wherever. Just in case um, you made some changes you, you need to fix. And again, especially in here. All right, so there's a couple things to be aware of. First of all, the used fix height menu is turned off by default because that would mean that anytime I add icons to my favorites menu, whether I drag them in there or do it the old fashioned way by adding that to favorites, that's the old fashioned way. You can also drag these in here. Uh, this particular box keeps growing depending on how many icons and the size of the icons. Because a lot of the stuff in here has a bearing on the height of this box. Now I'm going to do something different. I'm going to slide this on and I'm going to crank this up to like a thousand. And now I'm going to click that. Do you see how tall that box is? All right. Now I'm going to turn it off. It self adjusts. Well, what if you want to go in between? Let's say you don't want a thousand. You wanted something like 800. Well, certainly you can do that. Just hit your enter key. And that's 800. Lots of space in here, right? That's all up to you. But again, the default is auto adjust. That means that anytime you add icons in here manually, this will keep growing and self adjusting. So if I remove icons, this will also shrink or depending on how I set the height and the width, sorry, the uh, size of the icons. That's all done through here. So each one of these has a resizer and you can also eliminate the icons by just turning that off. There's no icons here now. So I can also um, take and um, application icons and turn those off. Now the application icons are disappeared. All I have is text. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I'm just showing you the, the options that are here. So they, these are currently set on my machine at 22. Uh, yours could be a little bit different, but just do a screenshot before you start changing numbers if you need to go back to your original numbers. The one I'm going to caution you about is this one right here. All right, show favorites and session buttons. So this is your favorites. And these are your session buttons. In other words, where your quit is, what happens when I turn that off? I don't have any way to log out of my system now or even turn it off unless I have another icon on my panel bar somewhere. Well, I can get out of here, but more importantly, um, I'm just showing you what happens when you uh, turn that off. So let's go back and turn that back on. Again, that's under Show Favorites and Session Buttons. And now my buttons are back. And my Favorites. Again, you can change the size of the icons. Favorites are currently set a little bit uh, higher than the application icons. So in other words, these are bigger than these. By the way, I set that, those things in here. Show Bookmarks and Places. Well, you probably want that. But uh, here's Places. No, I don't have that. I just have the recent files. Now I don't have recent files either. Now they're all gone. And you notice this panel bar shrunk. So I eliminated some categories in here. So bookmarks and places and recents. The menu editor I talked in a different video and this is way too extensive to get into in this video. So behavior. Uh, change categories on hover. You probably want that. Okay, that's the hover. Enable auto scrolling. Now I'm going to turn this feature off. This is normally on. What is auto scrolling? Let's leave that on for a second. All right, auto scrolling is this. I'm going to do all applications and I'm going to take my mouse pointer and I'm going to go downstairs. You may have never discovered this, but I'm going to actually move my mouse pointer and allow it to auto scroll. I'm, my hand is completely off the mouse. It's automatically doing this. As I move my mouse pointer slightly down, it goes faster and faster and faster. And then I can go the other way. You have to be right underneath the search box to do this. It's auto scrolling. And I go a little bit faster. 
And then as soon as you uh, go up, then you're good to go. Now, what if you turn that off? What's gonna happen is if I turn that off and you go into this area here, it doesn't do any auto scrolling. I'm moving my mouse downstairs and nothing's happening. So for me to see the stuff below, I'd either have to grab a hold of this scroll bar or use my USB based computer scroll wheel to do that with. So that's what that feature does. It's normally on by default, auto scrolling. That's all that means. This one is a little bit more difficult for people to wrap their heads around. Enable file system path entry and search box. I'm going to perform that one. But before I do that, I am going to grab a hold of, uh, so Bob is my user for today. He's our fictitious user for today. Let's do music. So I'm going to toggle the entry bar so I can have a path. And I'm going to copy the path by highlighting it and copy it. And I'm going to close this box and I'll leave this search feature on. Walk over to here. And if I right click and try to paste, nothing will happen. However, on your keyboard, you can use control V and it'll paste that command and automatically populate that. This may not be a useful feature for some folks. Opening your file manager is probably quicker, but I thought I'd make mention of that setting anyways. So we're gonna go down here and again, enlarge that slightly. So that's the last item under behavior. So again, that's not a favorite with everybody. All right, so again, my recommendation is if you are making changes, do yourself a screenshot. If you altered this key to something different, just be aware that um, if you're trying to use the super key and you altered this, that's why it's not working. And it will tell you what key. So a lot of times too, and if you uh, do this, I'm gonna pick the, and it'll, it'll tell me, oh, that can't be used because of something. So it gives you some scenarios if you're gonna try to alter keys. All right, this is a good choice in my case. Thank you for watching, folks, and take care.